few years ago, I went for my annual checkup. And when I sat in the waiting room filling out that form they give you, I saw the words, parents, living or dead, and two little boxes to check. Well, I checked living for both my mother and father. But when I handed it in, the receptionist said, Ms. Wallitzer, did you understand this part? She thought it was unlikely that a woman of my age hadn't yet lost even one parent. My parents were alive, thank you very much. <laughs> and not only that, they were kind of cool. Even when I was a teenager in the suburbs, I thought they were kind of cool, at least compared with other parents in the suburbs. <laughs> My mother, Hilma, was a writer, and my father, Morty, was a therapist. And back then, they rocked a very 1970s vibe. Lots of crocheted vests and wide ties. You remember those. Here's a photo from after that time. Um, note the leopard print placemats. <laughs> Eventually, they lived in a high rise in the city, just a couple of 90-year-olds who watched British mysteries on TV after dinner. It's always the village doctor who did it, my mom said. <laughs> Though she'd been a novelist and a short story writer since I was a kid, she hadn't written fiction in years, and my dad was retired from his therapy practice. They had a good life, and they were enjoying themselves. On March 27, 2020, as COVID was ramping up and everything was becoming frightening and surreal, my father began coughing, and suddenly he couldn't stand up. My mother called an ambulance for him, and he entered the hospital during that first COVID wave, carrying his very old Samsung flip phone. I'd always teased him about that phone, saying, while you're at it, Dad, why not get a butter churn? But he insisted his flip phone was fine. Of course, we weren't allowed to visit him in the hospital, but though he had the virus, he seemed to do really well, and he had a kind young doctor looking after him. Meanwhile, in their apartment, my mother, who was staying out of stores, was trying to master the art of ordering from Instacart. <laughs> but they screwed up her delivery, and when she called, she was put on hold and forced to listen to Muzak for hours. Probably it was an endless loop of the Pina Colada song. <laughs> a couple of days later, she became sick too, and she was taken by ambulance to a different hospital. She was a patient there when my dad's oxygen levels began to plummet. Because of his flip phone, we'd only been speaking to him, not seeing him. But suddenly it was really urgent that my sister and I see him, and the doctor offered his own iPhone so we could FaceTime with our dad. There he was on screen in a heavy-duty oxygen mask, and his voice was so hard to understand. It was the last time we saw him. At the end of the call, his doctor got on and said to us that every night in the hospital, our father had been telling him stories about his life, his marriage, his two daughters. And the doctor added, he wants you to know that you were a great family. As my father got worse, my mother got better. And when he was told that she was going to be released from her hospital in a couple of days, he could no longer speak. But apparently he clapped his hands, applauding this good news. And he died later that night. My mother came home to a silent apartment where all my father's clothes and belongings still lay. His extra pair of drugstore eyeglasses, his house keys, and his collection of ties which had widened and narrowed over the decades. But she also came home to a new world, widowhood, with the pandemic still raging. There had been no funeral, no in-person anything. While all of this was happening, I was so sad, and I'd begun to reread my mom's old short stories. They were funny and moving, and they made me feel a little better. As she recovered, it occurred to me that she could collect them into a book. A publisher was eager to publish it, but the collection wasn't quite long enough. So my mom decided that she should write a new short story. She wasn't sure she was up to it, but she knew she needed a way forward. When I was growing up, I would happily fall asleep to the sound of her typewriter. It was like rain on a roof. But not every child of a writer is always thrilled about their parents' job, let me tell you. When my older son was little, we were walking down the street and we passed a McDonald's, and there was a sign in the window that said, now hiring. And he glanced up at it and at me and he said, look, mom, look, maybe you could do that instead. 
He thought writing wasn't a job to count on. And sometimes, boy, that is true. My mother didn't think she'd ever write a story again, yet now she was. And the story she wrote was about what had happened to her and my father at the end of their long marriage. She changed some details because this was fiction, but it was still emotionally true. During those early days of COVID, everyone was shocked at having to stay apart just when we needed to be together. But stories which can be listened to in an amazing room like this, or listened to alone or read alone, provide a collective and powerful experience. They bring us up close to other people, both the ones three miles away who we can't see and those we can see only in our imagination or our memory. Last year, my mother's collection, Today a Woman Went Mad in the Supermarket, was published. Great title. <laughs> and her COVID slash long marriage story became the final one in the book. She was 91 when it came out. Yeah. In addition to mastering Instacart, she suddenly had to master Zoom for her virtual book tour. And she did beautifully. You know, I'm thinking someday I will write a memoir of the Zoom years and I will call it, Do I Have to Wear a Bra for This? <laughs> yes. Months after my father died, my mother called the doctor who'd cared for him. He'd given me his number and he said that if she ever wanted to talk, to please tell her to call, it had taken her a long time to be able to do it. When she did, she said to him, I wanted to thank you for taking care of my husband, but I was afraid after all this time that you might not remember him. And maybe it was because of the family stories my father had told the doctor on those long nights in the hospital with only the sound of the machines beeping in the background that caused the doctor to tell my mother, of course I'll remember him. I will carry him in my heart. Thank you.